So, Colonel, thank you for joining us on, at AOPA. You were the organizer of the show of force flyover uh, the day the Japanese uh, signed the surrender papers on the USS Missouri. And you organized 525 B-29s that day. How did all that come about? Well, first, you, you, you've given me a title that I don't have. Uh, General LeMay is the one that organized the 500 B-29s. Okay. Uh, he's the one that authorized it, and uh, it would have ever happened without him, his authorization. How, oh, how did it come about? How did how did oh, you hook up with General LeMay uh, to become part of the part of the of the group? As you probably know, uh, General LeMay was head of the 20th Air Force. Uh, he he ran the B-29 operation. He he's the one that put Japan under, and uh, I could go on to a long thing about that, but. Uh, uh, MacArthur was a, uh, he became, he was appointed by the President of the United States as Supreme Commander, and uh, as a result, he also was the uh, administrator of the Sh peace treaty. And they decided to have it on the battleship Missouri in uh, Tokyo Bay. Uh, MacArthur was a military historian uh, of, some, of some note, and he had studied uh, military history going way back centuries. And one of the things that, they, that, that impressed him uh, that ap applied to the surrender was that in the early days when they ground forces, and that's all there was, was the ground forces, surrendered, they would uh, disarm the surrendering party and put them at parade rest in a stand, if there was one, or the side of the hill, and they would uh, uh, arm their own forces with everything they had, and they would march them in front of the parade rest, defeated army. And this was, uh, a purpose to this was the, it was called a show of force, to show the surrendering party that they had done the right thing. That uh, they, they, they and, and this sort of put under water a lot of possibilities where some contingents of the army uh, and usually it happened, uh, didn't agree with the surrender thing. Mm -hmm. And this was to convince them that they surrendered. And MacArthur wanted to have a show of force uh, uh, ceremony. And he said, oh my smokes, how am I going to have a show of force in the middle of Tokyo Bay? And LeMay said, I'll put every serviceable B-29 over the battleship when you sign it. And MacArthur said, that's it. We got it. That's what you'll do. And uh, that's how the show of force came about. Uh, and LeMay uh, arranged it so that every serviceable B-29 was in the air that day mm. over the battleship Missouri. and. Uh, I just happened to be at the right place at the right time and uh, ended up uh, commanding the entire force. And that was, I only took over from the initial point where they all gathered together and, and left that point and went over the battleship. Uh, and, and I orchestrated it the 500 airplanes assembled in groups and uh, would c converge on this IP. And I, my target time was at 9.08 uh, in the morning of December, of uh, September 2nd. Uh, 
and uh, uh, I I had to have uh, uh, all these airplanes ready sequentially to follow follow me in, and 908 was picked because that was the scripted time that MacArthur was going to sign the the uh, missile, and uh, uh, which he didn't, but it came pretty close to it. And the, the thing that threw the threw the scripted time off, and this was a pretty big thing happening on a battleship. One of the party of the surrendering party had a leg shot off in a or, or in a war, and and so he had to come up. Uh, as a lame duck, and it took him a long time mm -hmm. to get him up <laughs> to the deck where from the boat. But anyway, uh, 908 was my uh, point of, uh, of, fly, of passing, first passing over, and then all the airplanes following behind. Uh, and we hit it right on the head, and I have a, I had a Chicago Tribune photographer on board and he took a picture right down we were at about 2,000 feet uh, over the battleship and I have a picture right over the battleship mm -hmm. at that time uh, it turns out it it uh, I was about 10 minutes early they got they got delayed and I, I got there a little bit before right. he signed it but uh, I I had a incident happened to me many many years later uh, two couple years ago I was out to Hawaii uh, with my good friend Donna Lazardi and uh, we went on the battleship Missouri mm -hmm. and they have a square marked out that this is where MacArthur sat when he signed the oh, surrender right and I went over and I stood in the middle of that and I looked up and I could see myself <laughs> flying over and the tears started running down my oh eyes. My. It was a very emotional point. Yeah. Uh, what was it like to be in the cockpit that day, lead, leading all those airplanes? Were you nervous? Well, I had been on, this was, this was about my hundred and 16th combat mission. Mm. So I had been through a lot and it was really just another mission for me. I'd led a lot of smaller missions right. over the targets and this was just another mission. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to be as big as it was to begin with uh, because we were divided into wings of, of B-29s, you know, and, and that's the, the the Air Corps was divided into wings, and I was in the 58th wing, and there were four other wings on Mariana Islands, and and we just knew them as sister uh, wings, but right. they they weren't connected to us in any other way other than they went over the target, so uh, I was just leading all of them as a group. Mm. And uh, was uh, the battleship Missouri was just another target. Yeah. Oh. So, so it probably uh, it didn't impress me as much. F first place, I happened to be at the right place at the right time to get the job. Well, given your excellent role that day, today I understand you've accepted the role of honorary air boss for the arsenal of democracy flights in May of 2020, a flyover of Washington, D.C. And so you're going to be involved in the briefing of the pilots. So what, what are you going to say to the pilots uh, that day as they prepare to fly these airplanes over Washington, D.C. Uh, on the day commemor commemorating uh, the end of the war in Europe? Get in line and stay in line. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, follow the instructions that you were given and and you we'll all get this thing off on time <laughs> yeah uh, so how, how relate for those pilots 
what it's like to be a part of such a significant flight? Well, it's a, you can't believe the honor it is for me, uh, the honor for me uh, to have this job. It, it, I, I actually tingled all over, just the thought of it. Uh, at a at, uh, hundred years old, I finally became air boss of something <laughs> again. Uh, uh, I just turned a hundred, as you probably know. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, unfortunately, there, there are ver I practically know nobody in my units that are alive. Uh, I, I, they, they just all died off. Right, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty lonely in that respect. Right. Yeah. So your participation is sort of in, in honor of all your, your comrades uh, from it, back then, it, right? It sure is. It sure is. Uh, you know, it, it's, 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 it's impossible for you to know how we felt when the surrender happened. We st I, I remember I was a, I had a pretty high position. I was operation officer of one of the units. And uh, I had a staff and we were sitting around a table like that over there. And the first pictures of Hiroshima came in. Mm -hmm. And we looked at them and it, we had been putting 50, 100, 200, 300 airplanes over target. I led the largest, the largest inline bombing of World War II. I happened to have been the leader of that, which was over the, the city of Yokohama. Unfortunately, we we knocked it out uh, to the ground. We had I had 500, 454 B-29s in my unit that day. Uh, and here we're looking at pictures of complete destruction, and they're telling us that one airplane did this. And it, it was almost like it, we were in a disbelief oh. uh, position that, that, that how could this possibly happen when we, <laughs> we, we uh, sent bombers after bombers after bombers right. <laughs> over Japan. Yeah. And uh, here one airplane did all that. It was a it was astounding at the least. It was, and it was the turning point uh, for peace that it was meant to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you, get, you, you, you get me into a pretty controversial area there. Uh, the, war was, the, the war was over uh, before the bomb was dropped. Mm -hmm. uh, we were dropping leaflets. We sent airplanes over the targets that we were going to hit and drop the leaflets and say that tomorrow at 10 o'clock we're going to bomb your t your uh, Mitsubishi factory and uh, so beware yeah. and uh, because we had no opposition wow. they were dead they were dead in the water yeah. Japan was dead in the water we had them sealed off we had dropped 12,000 mines every port every port and Japan was mine. No ship mm. could move without getting the bottom blowing out of it. And uh, uh, so they, they were starving to death. They were, they were actually sending food, uh, rice from, from Co Korea. They knew that some of the, what some of the sea currents, currents were they would put rice in 55 gallon drums, seal them, throw them in the water, and they would end up on the beaches in Japan. Wow. This was, they, they, they could get shipping in any other way. Hmm. So uh, that's the controversial right. thing. The war was over, they dropped the bomb. Somebody yeah. decided they needed to drop the bomb and yeah. they were gonna do it no matter what, oh. which, which uh, LeMay, never agreed with. Well. LeMay uh, said they should have uh, taken one of the 
dozens of little islands that were uninhabited right off Japan and said, hey, we'll show you what one bomb can do. You better stop. Right. Um, but they didn't attempt to do that. Yeah. Now, there, were, there were actually uh, three piece probes being made at the time. And they were in Europe, two of them were in Europe, and one of them was in China. Uh, different envoys of the Japanese government were trying to, to get a channel into our government. Uh, you know, it's not, you just can't get up and say something, you have to have contacts. Right. And, uh, uh, they should have gone through LeMay. <laughs> oh. All right. So uh, during the arsenal of democracy flight, we've got all these airplanes available to you. If you could fly in one, which, which one would you choose? B-29. B-29. Yeah. That was a quick answer. You I I delivered the B first B-29 the Air Force accepted from Boeing aircraft. Uh -huh. And I flew on the last mission. I flew on the first mission to Japan, and I flew on the last mission. Wow. Yeah. So you've you've seen Fifi and B and and Doc, the only two that are Doc's still flying. Doc's going to be here. Uh, well, Doc will be part of the arsenal of democracy. You okay. bet. Um, it's a beautiful airplane. You've seen it. Well, I've seen pictures of yeah. it. I've seen movies of it. Of course. Or television. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe that anybody ever did what they did. Yeah. I, nobody can realize what they did to put find four engines find a fuselage, find parts of a fuselage, right. put them all together and make an airplane out of it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a remarkable feat that they did. It's, it it's really, really is. Really quite, a, quite an airplane. Yeah, so, so they, have, they, they need to be honored. Right. Yeah. All right. So it takes a lot of coordination among the government agencies and the civilian world that we live in to, to make a flight like the Arsenal of Democracy flight happen. Um, what do you think about that? I am amazed that it can be done uh, to get all the, uh, all the different agencies uh, to agree to it because a lot of people have to agree to this thing for you to be able to do it. Right. I'm sure of that. I'm just guessing. No, but I'm right. sure, I feel sure. And I, I, th I think it's wonderful that uh, they, they gave it consideration and decided to, to uh, support it. And I, their support may be only just that they say they acc acclimate that it's okay. You may be getting uh, other kinds of support right. from that I don't know about. Right. Yeah. Well, it's great that they are doing that. It's a, a wonderful thing to recognize what happened on that day. So the Arsenal of Democracy flight, uh, what do you think about that from as far as, as, as the public is concerned? And what, what does that do for the country and people who maybe aren't so familiar with World War II and what actually happened there? Well, I would like to feel that it uh, awakens a lot of people that should be awake and be passing on uh, what happened and why it happened and, and what we uh, got out of it. And not just not just the bad part, right. uh, but all the good part. Uh, interesting on on that respect. Uh, Jap uh, Tokyo Radio uh, interviewed me last year, Tokyo Television, uh -huh. and uh, they had a team come to my house and spend a day with me. Mm. And the the keynote guy and a and a right in the tail end, they spent the whole day, said to me, uh, what do you think uh, the war did for the world? And I said, you know, it's funny that you should ask me this. I should think you ought to know the answer. You and I, one time, would shoot or kill one another and here we are in my house talking to one another. And you're asking me a question like that. Oh. And I said, it, it, that's, that's, it brought, brought a lot of people together that, that were not together. Right. And it's an opportunity to educate people about those times. 
Right. It, it, uh, it, uh, uh, I think that, that high schools should have a course uh, concerning not only World War II, but World War I and World War II were related. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and probably all these wars we're in right now are, are related. Uh, but uh, uh, we need other arsenals for democracy. Uh, it might turn out to be different kinds of things. Mm. Maybe, it's, maybe it's diplomatic. I don't know, yeah. but uh, there's there's there's, there's uh, there are other arsenals of democracy, but the the Air Force was an arsenal of democracy in World War II as a result of World War II. Well, thank you for for sharing uh, that uh, information for us about the show of force and for also volunteering to be the. Air Boss, the Honorary Air Boss for the Arsenal of Democracy. It's a wonderful honor uh, for us to have you here and to see you participate in that. Well, it's, it's an honor to be here, too. All right, thank and you. And it's really a thrill to be here and, and, and hear this news. Thank you. <laughs>